ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونصح الامه وتركنا على المحجه البيضاء ليلها كنهارها لا يزيغ عنها الا هالك صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله عباد الله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اللهم اجعلنا من الفائزين في الدنيا والاخره اتقوا الله عباد الله حق تقواه واسال الله سبحانه في البدايه اسال الله سبحانه وتعالى ان يجعلني واياكم ان يجعلني واياكم ممن اذا اعطي شكر اللهم اجعلنا من هؤلاء واذا ابتلي صبر واذا اذنب استغفر واي فان ذلك عنوان السعاده my brothers and sisters in islam just before i begin may i ask the brothers very kindly if they can come forward jazakumullah khairan the brothers who are sitting in the main hall brothers please make room i have been instructed to say so barakallahu fikum my brothers and sisters in islam our khutbah today i just began with a very important dua i have asked allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for each and every one of us to make us those to make us from those whom when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them something they are grateful to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala idha u'tiya shakar he thanks allah subhanahu wa ta'ala number 2 wa idha abtuliya sabr when allah puts you to the test you exercise patience you don't lose it and number 3 wa idha adnab astaghfar when he commits a sin and he goes astray he comes back to allah he makes tauba to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala my brothers and sisters in islam you have the right to ask the question how do i show my gratefulness to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala how can i do shukr ابن القيم رحمه الله تعالى حسد الشكر مبني على ثلاثة اركان he said شكر or being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is built upon three pillars three pillars what's the first pillar الاعتراف بها باطنا you have to internally acknowledge what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you with How many of us acknowledge the blessings Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala gave us internally inside from the inside number 2 wa tahaddathu biha zahiran and you talk about it openly and you say alhamdulillah Allah has blessed me with this this is the blessing Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala has given me and number 3 pillar number 3 wa tasrifiha ila ma yurdi subhanallah and you utilize the blessings allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you for what things for things that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with if you do that it means you have made the shukr as for the number 2 wa idha tuli sabr when you are put to the test how should you react when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests you with difficulties and calamities and you have just been told for example your mother has been diagnosed with cancer or you have just been told that your mother is terminally ill or you have just been told that you have lost your child or you have just been told that your child has been taken to prison or you have just been told your son has killed someone right now when you are afflicted with that kind of test how should you react how should you react 
وَإِذَا بْتُلِيَ sabr, You exercise patience. The question now is, you have the right to ask, what does sabr mean? What does it really mean, sabr? You, we hear the word sabr, 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 sabr. But what does it mean? This is what sabr means. Sabr means, حَبْسُ النَّفْسِ عَنِ التَّسَخُّطِ بِالْمَقْدُورِ What does that mean? You keep yourself, or you protect yourself from being upset with what? With what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has decreed. You've just heard, a, you have, a bad news has just been broken. A bad news has just been, has just reached you. A severe bad news. Don't, how you should react, do not become upset. Number two. وَحَبْسُ اللِّسَانِ عَنِ الشَّكْوَى You protect your tongue from complaining. You don't say, why is it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has done this to me? Why is it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made my kids just like this? Why do I have this illness? Why have I lost my job? Why? Don't say these things. And the last thing, وَحَبْسُ الْجَوَارِحِ عَنِ الْمَعْصِيَةِ you protect your, your limbs from committing sins. As we know, if somebody hasn't got iman, and a bad news is, comes and reads him, what do they do? They become upset with the news, they complain about it, and thirdly, they go and commit more sins. They go and drink. They go and take drugs, just to make themselves forget what happened. So if you want to be a proper sabir, Someone who has patience, you need to exercise those three things. My brothers and sisters in Islam, it's easier to say than do. It's easier to say than actually practically do these things. Yes, that's the truth. That's the truth. That's the truth. And there are reasons for this. There are reasons for this. أخرج ابن أبي شيبة رحمه الله تعالى في مصنفه من حديث عبد الله بن شقيق ما من آدمي You might be wondering why is it hard ما من آدمي إلا لقلبه بيتان في أحدهما الملك وفي الآخر الشيطان فإذا ذكر الله خنس وإذا لم يذكر الله وضع الشيطان من قاره في قلبه ووسوس له سبحان الله The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم What has he said in this hadith the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, there's no son of Adam, no single human being, except in his heart, are two, two different houses. The first house, do you know the resident of that house is an angel. And the second house is resided by who? By shaitan. فَإِذَا ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَنَسْ What happens when you remember Allah? He hides. He turns away and he runs away. But when you forget, وَإِذَا لَمْ يَذْكُرِ اللَّهِ وَضَعَ الشَّيْطَانُ مِنْ قَارَهُ فِي قَلْبِهِ وَوَسْوَسَ لَهُ As soon as you forget the remembrance of Allah, shaitan comes back. And he brings, he comes into your heart and he begins to whisper to you all the evil, all different things which are evil. My brothers and sisters in Islam, I want to bring to your attention another powerful hadith. Another powerful hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this hadith, أخرجه الترمذي وابن حبان من حديث الحارث بن الحارث رضي الله عنه إن الله أمر يحيى إن الله أمر يحيى ابن زكريا عليهما السلام أن يأمر بني إسرائيل بخمس كلمات سأذكره بالعربي ثم بعد ذلك أقوم بشرح الحديث باللغة الإنجليزية بإذن الله تعالى إن الله يأمر إن الله, يأ... إن الله أمر يحيى ب... يحي بن زكريا عليهما السلام أن يأمر بني إسرائيل بخمس كلمات But I can only tell you one today منها ذكر الله فإن مثل ذلك كمثل رجل خرج العدو في أثره سراعا حتى إذا أتى على حصن حصين فأحرز نفسه منهم كذلك العبد لا يحرز نفسه من الشيطان إلا إيه 
إلا بذكر الله. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam reminded us in this hadith a very powerful reminder. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Prophet Yahya, the son of Zakaria alayhi salam. And he said to him, I want you to tell the people of Banu Israel five things. But we can only talk about one of those five things today. One of those five things is dhikrullah. Remind them to remember me. Why? Because the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the likeness of what? Is the likeness of a man whose enemy are just right after him. And he's running away from them. He's trying to avoid the enemy. And the enemy are doing their best to catch up with him and catch him and absolutely get rid of him. Until this man whose enemy are chasing him, until he reaches a fortress. Until he reaches a fortress. And when he reaches that fortress, that's where he takes refuge. Inside the fortress. And he locks himself in. Will the enemies be able to do anything to him right now? No. He protected himself. Himself from the enemies. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, The slave of Allah is just like that man. The only way he can protect himself from his true enemy, which is shaitan, is bi dhikrillah. Wallahi, no money can protect you from shaitan. No army in the world can protect you from shaitan. No tribe can protect you from shaitan. No imam can protect you from shaitan. One thing can protect you from shaitan. And that is dhikrullah. How many of you are paying attention right now? How many of you are paying attention to the concept I'm talking about now? Because when we hear the word dhikr of Allah, what comes to our mind? The rotation of the beads, the tusbah. That's what comes to our mind. And somebody just moving their tongue with few words. But is that, is that the essence of dhikr? Is that the reality of dhikr? Wallahi la. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said in Surah Al-Jum'ah, and we've heard this many times, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, idha nudiya li salati min yawm al-jum'ah, fas'aw ila eh, ila al-khutbah, la, ila al-salah, la, ila qira'at al-Qur'an, la, ila dhikrillah, the remembrance of Allah. Number two, what did Allah say when it comes to our salah? Wa aqimi salata li dhikri. Is it about just saying subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar? Is that what dhikr is all about? The whole essence, the essence of our whole our religion is the dhikr of Allah. Look at what Allah has said after the hajj. فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهَ كَذِكْرِكُمْ آبَاءَكُمْ أَوْ أَشَدَّ ذِكْرًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He commanded the people who have just finished the act of worship. Which act of worship? Hajj. They have just completed Hajj. And what Allah, what is Allah asking them to do after they finish their Hajj? He said, فَإِذَا قَضَيْتُمْ مَنَاسِكَكُمْ فَاذْكُرُوا اللَّهِ Remember Allah. كَذِكْرِكُمْ آبَاءَكُمْ The same way that you used to remember your forefathers. Because the Arabs, before, the, before Prophet Muhammad came to them, they used to do Hajj. But after they complete Hajj, or the days when they were in Mina, each tribe would sit down. And just talk about how great their forefathers were. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compensated the believers by giving them something else. And he said to them, Fadkurullah. Remember me, after you've just completed the hajj, when you thought, Alhamdulillah, you've done a great job, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to you, No, 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 no. You're not done with my dhikr. You are not done with me yet. You have to remember me now. Now I know you finished hajj. You stood hajj. You stood in Arafah. You went to Muzdalifa. You came back. You are in Mina now. But you still have to remember me. Remember me right now. Fadkurullah. Kadhikrikum aba'akum aw ashadda dhikra. Even more than you used to mention your forefathers. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we have to understand the concept of dhikr in its own real way. The reality of dhikr. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu dhkuru allaha dhikran kathira. O you who believe, remember Allah 
abundantly. Abundantly. Not every now and then. Abundantly. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu dhkuru allaha dhikran kathira. Wasabbihuhu bukratan wa asila. And glorify him during the morning and during the evening. And what's going to happen? What will be the result if that's who you are? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, هو الذي يصلي عليكم وملائكته ليخرجكم من الظلمات إلى النور وكان بالمؤمنين رحيما Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, if you do dhikr, proper dhikr, I'm not talking about the verbal dhikr. I'm not talking about just moving your tongue with subhanallah and allahu akbar and la ilaha illallah. Do you know these words, how dear they are to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أَرْبَعُ حَبُّ الْكَلَامِ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَرْبَعٌ وَهُنَّ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ Four words are so beloved to Allah and they are from the Qur'an. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illa Allah, wallahu akbar. What, what does it mean when you say subhanallah? You're glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're saying Allah is free from any imperfection. When you say alhamdulillah, you say the most complete praise belongs to Allah. When you say, La ilaha illallah, no deity is worthy of worship except him. And when you say, Allahu Akbar, you're saying Allah is greater than everything. Allah is greater than me. Allah is greater than my parents. Allah is greater than my family. Allah is greater than my tribe. Allah is greater than my community. Allah is greater than society. Allah is greater than the government. Allah is greater than the whole empire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is greater than the whole universe. That's what you're saying. Allahu Akbar. Therefore, my brothers and sisters in Islam, we need to give the true essence of what? Of dhikr. What's our reward then? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, هُوَ الَّذِي يُصَلِّي عَلَيْكُمْ He's the one who's going to shower you with his rahmah. And his angels will make dua for you. And what else is going to happen? لِيُخْرِجَكُمْ مِنَ الظُّلُمَاتِ إِلَى النُّورِ Wallahi, akhi, we are swimming inside the ocean. The depth of the ocean. Full of darkness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, when you remember me, I want to bring you out of that darkness and bring you to light. That's what Allah is telling us. He wants, he wants us to come out of the darkness. Allah is so kind and merciful to the believers. And when they meet him, تَحِيَّتُهُمْ يَوْمَ يَلْقَوْنَهُ سَلَامٌ Allahu Akbar. Just imagine when you meet your Lord and he says to you, Salam. Subhanallah. The young person is supposed to say Salam to the older person. But here, look, Allah, the Almighty, is saying to you, Yawma yalqawnahu Salam. When will that happen? When you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how he should be remembered. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum, fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafurul rahim. الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير وصل اللهم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد my brothers let us just remind ourselves one more time because we are so forgetful. We are so forgetful, Ikhwani. And this is the reality. Just let us remind ourselves something I just said as part of the first part of the khutbah. Al Abdu la yuhrizu nafsahu min al shaytani illa bidikrillah. The slave of Allah will never be able to protect himself from his enemy, shaitan, except with the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And look at the hadith that Imam Ahmad has mentioned in his book, An Mu'adh ibn Jabalin radiyallahu anhu qal, Ma'amila adamiyun amalan, amalan qat, anja lahu min adhabillahi min dhikrillah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, the son of Adam, he will never do an act more secure or will guarantee for him more in terms of being saved from the hellfire 
accept the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the greatest thing that can keep you out of where? Out of the hellfire. And also my brothers and sisters in Islam, look at Imam al-Bayhaqi rahimahullahu ta'ala. What he has mentioned from Mu'adh ibn Jabalin radiyallahu anhu marfu'an, even when we enter paradise, even the people of paradise, they will feel a bit of sadness for one reason. What is that? لَيْسَ تَحَسُّرُ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا عَلَى سَاعَةٍ مَرَّتْ بِهِمْ لَمْ يَذْكُرُ اللَّهِ Even the people when they enter paradise, they will regret one thing. They will regret a moment that came to pass in this world where they did not remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're not going to regret how much they haven't made enough money, they didn't have enough kids, no. They're going to regret a moment that was there, but they didn't say something that was from the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They haven't done that. My brothers and sisters in Islam, I want to, inshallah ta'ala, bring an end to the khutbah and bring to your attention the virtues, one of the virtues of this great act of worship, dhikr Allah. Look at what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said when Mu'adh has asked him, أَيُّ الْأَعْمَالِ أَحَبُّ إِلَى اللَّهِ He said to him, what is the act of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loved most? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said, أَن تَمُوتَ وَلِسَانُكَ رَطْبٌ مِّن ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ He said that you die while your tongue is moist with the remembrance of Allah. You die that time. Saying, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah. Will this come easily to you? No. You have to be someone that practices it. Someone who internalizes it. The message of our khutbah today is not just to say, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu akbar. The message of our khutbah today is to internalize the dhikr of Allah. To show devotion from the inside. Whenever we say, subhanallah, say it with a meaning. Say it with purpose. That time it will affect you. Why are we praying salah? And we are not being affected by the salah. Why are we giving sadaqah? And we are not being affected. Why are we doing dhikr? And we are not being affected. Why? You see a Muslim who outwardly looks so Muslim. But from the inside, he looks so un-Muslim. Why? Because that person is connected to the religion by name. He's connected to the religion by words. But he's not connected to the religion with his heart. See here, brothers. It all happens right here. Right here, right here, brothers. At taqwa hahuna, the Prophet said. It happens right here. That's why we have so many Muslims, unfortunately, doing the wrong things. Despite what? They, they're doing. You see them pray salah, come to the masjid, wear, mashallah, nice though. But do ghiba all the time. Don't like other people. Being bad to their wives. And wives being not good to their husbands. Or being terrible to their families. Why? Because the dhikr that they have is just a dhikr which is so weak. My brothers and sisters in Islam. Insha'Allah ta'ala I'm just going to conclude it with this. As I was mentioning, I was actually touching my heart. As you know, the heart, Khwani, is the most important organ that we have. Not only biologically, but also spiritually. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ وَإِذَا فَسِدَتْ فَسِدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ And unfortunately, the heart becomes rusty. Like the metal becomes rusty, Khwani. What makes it rusty? Two things. الْغَفْلَةُ وَالذَّمْ Heedlessness and sins. That's what makes our hearts absolutely become rusty. But what we polish it and clean, cleanse it and make it clean, two things. Al-istighfar with, with dhikr. Tawbah and the remembrance of Allah. Saying astaghfirullah. And making tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is what's going to clean our hearts. I want every brother and sister to leave the masjid today with a promise. 
saying, I want to change. I want to remember Allah for real. I want to remember Allah for real. Wallahi, if we don't remember Allah for real, our state will never change. Our state will never change. However much we come to the masjid, however much sadaqah we give, however much we read the Quran, it's not going to change. Unless we internalize and show devotion and deep concentration in what we do. Very, very important. The Quran that we're reading today is exactly the same Quran the Prophet used to recite. Abu Bakr anhu used to recite. Umar anhu used to recite. We're not reading a different Quran. This is the Quran that changed the companions. This is the Quran. It's not a new Quran. It's not different. This is the same Quran. The Salah we're praying, the four rak'ah of Dhuhr, the four rak'ah of Asr, this is the same Salah they used to pray. But what's the difference? They used to internalize it, and we are just externalizing it. From the outward, we look like someone who's praying. From the outward, we look like, like someone who's reciting the Quran, but we're not reciting the Quran. Therefore, my brothers, we need to change, inshallah ta'ala. And I'm just going to ask the brothers very kindly, inshallah ta'ala, as you know, one of the best places where we can do dhikr is the houses of in, in the houses of Allah, and this is our house of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. This one of the houses of Allah. This is the masjid we are in right now. This is where we are able to carry out the dhikr of Allah, the dhikr that Allah has invited us to come to, the dhikr of Salatul Jum'ah. This is the house of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Brothers, if you truly, truly took something from this khutbah today, you need to change. You need to say, I want to do proper dhikr of Allah. When you give something, you don't give something because there's a brother standing outside the door. There's somebody just waiting for you. So you just, it becomes a habit. You just give five pounds every, every, every week. You give it with sincerity. You give it with devotion. You give it with concentration and say, I'm giving this to purify myself and my wealth. I'm giving it. Money doesn't make anything. It's not that, val- it's not that important. The important thing is akhirah. I want Allah to be pleased with me. Allah gave me money. I want to give this money to the masjid. Because one of the things we mentioned at the beginning, how do you make shukr? One of the three things. The last one was, you use the, the things Allah gave you for the thing, to things that Allah loves. And among the great things Allah loves is the preservation of his houses. People who look after the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So therefore, brothers, as you know, our masjid recently bought houses as waqf. The masjid is in debt of about 80,000. So it's important that all of us, inshallah ta'ala, participate and pay sadaqah. As we're leaving, whatever you've got, give it. If you haven't got now anything, come back later. That time you will know the khutbah has affected you. What Allah was saying, what the Prophet was saying, had an impact on you. If you don't, you just walk out, there's no impact. You need to come back. You need to ask more questions. Say, what's going on? Why am I not giving? Why am I not able to give something? This khutbah is not about sadaqah. It will come, inshallah ta'ala. There's another part of this hadith where the Prophet ﷺ, where the hadith is dealing with sadaqah and salah and other things. But inshallah ta'ala, we'll talk about it in that day, inshallah ta'ala. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi ya ayuha al-lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma aghfir lil muslimina wal muslimat wal mu'minina wal mu'minat al ahya'i minhum wal amwat bi rahmatika ya arhamar rahimin Allahumma a'izz al islam wal muslimin Allahumma a'izz al islam wal muslimin Allahumma a'izz al islam wal muslimin wa adhill al shirk wal mushrikin a'da'aka a'da'a al din rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al akhirati hasana wa qina a'dhab al nar Allahumma inna nas'aluka al huda wal tuqa wal afafa wal ghina inna Allah ya'muru bil adl wal ihsan wa ita'i dhil qurba wa yanha 'anil fahsha'i wal munkari wal baghy ya'idhukum la'allakum tadhakkarun wa aqim as And please pray your salah with full devotion and concentration. Barakallah fikum.